Goodbye. <laughs> See you later, man. <laughs> hey, what's up guys, it's Nick2, and today I'm extremely excited to show you guys what I still believe to be the absolute best build in all of Wonderlands. This build isn't gonna take advantage of any crazy bugs, glitches, broken damage interactions, or anything like that. It is just flat out insane damage all of the time. As a result, no matter what ends up getting buffed, nerfed, or fixed, this build will always be incredibly strong and shouldn't really get affected by that, because the power is going to come from the base characters. As you can tell from the gameplay, the damage is just completely ridiculous, and honestly, my setup isn't even 100% optimized, and that's probably the craziest part about it. This is currently my favorite build in the game, and I'm really, really happy that it came together as well as it did. The build pretty much has everything that you could want. You can just mob incredibly fast, you can kill bosses faster than I'm pretty sure anything else in the game, other than maybe like, you know, if a Spore Warden gets super lucky with some Play the Angles procs, but otherwise the damage is crazy and probably second to none. And my favorite part about the build is that you can use whatever weapon you want. If you're sick of just seeing these cryo weapons all over the place and you want to use something else, you can 100% do that and still absolutely destroy everything because the build isn't reliant on any specific damage type and the base damage with the setup is just so high you can use pretty much anything and still have a complete blast. If you guys liked the video, I would greatly appreciate you dropping a like, it helps me out a ton, and feel free to subscribe for videos similar to this one. There's also some extra gameplay at the end of a level 20 chaos chamber, so if you're interested, make sure to stick around for that. Real quick before I get into the build, I want to give a big shout out to Advanced.gg, where if you use my coupon code NICK2, you'll save 10% off and help support me a ton. I'd highly recommend this stuff if you guys are looking for something that's going to give you a whole bunch of energy and a lot of focus that's long lasting and isn't going to cause you to crash, while also tasting extremely really, like really good to be honest, I'd highly recommend checking out Advance. They have some great stuff, they use a nootropic formula so it's not going to have any garbage in it that's going to make you feel slow or tired or give you crashes or anything. Overall, really great stuff, I'd highly recommend it, and you can literally try it for free with the sampler pack, so overall, definitely recommend this stuff, and I'm a big fan of it, and I hope you guys are too. With all that out of the way, let's get into the build. So, like I have kind of been referencing, there's a lot of variation when it comes to this build, multiple different ways to set it up, primarily when it comes to weapons, and just some other minor things when it comes to preference. I'll try to mention all of those, but I also don't want to water down the video with 600 different options, but I do want to give you guys some options because it can be a little bit boring using, like, the same weapons and the same cookie cutter things all the time so having some sort of variation can really uh, liven up the gameplay in terms of the hero stats i seem to always forget about this we're just going to be maxing out crit damage because this is overall going to give us the largest damage increase that we can get during all those gameplay clips i was using status damage the main point was to just get as much damage as possible for those raid bosses if you're killing like zombie boss or just doing normal chaos trials and you're not trying to kill those raid bosses that quickly uh, the extra status damage I don't think is really going to help you, and I would rather opt for a full skill cooldown to just have more uptime and from the shadows. Being in that is more fun, to be honest, and then you have uh, some of your skills up more often as well. So overall, that just feels a lot more fun to me. And the extra status damage is probably negligible at best, if I'm being completely honest. The rest I would either put into spell cooldown or just status damage. Crit chance we don't need because we're using from the shadows, and uh, I still don't know if this works for weapons. So you could just go full into spell cooldown to have higher uptime on Buffmeister or status damage. I'm just going to do the spell cooldown just to see how low the cooldown really is, just for fun. And that's what we're going to do for the hero points. Obviously, we are going to be using Stabamancer. The main reason for Stabamancer is that you just get a lot of really good stuff in the tree here. It's going to increase your damage by a whole ton, and you get from the shadows, which I find to be extremely good for bosses. There's a lot of bosses where you can't uh, reliably always hit the crit 100% of the time, and with certain weapons, getting the extra crit multiplier guaranteed all the time is an insane amount of extra damage. And I think the main thing is that it is just very, very consistent. But also, with From the Shadows, we're able to take advantage of on-action skill active enchants, which at some point, currently they're bugged and they last a total of 60 seconds, regardless of whatever action skill you use. I imagine that at some point those will get patched. So we are not taking advantage of any bug with the setup, other than when we're not in From the Shadows, I guess, because it's still going to remain active. Nothing we can do, really do about that right now. But whenever that gets patched, this build is still going to be just as good at killing bosses because we're killing bosses within our From the Shadows window, and that's going to be while our action skill is active. So this is still, like I said, pretty much nerf proof. So that's the main reason for From the Shadows and playing Stabomancer. An alternative would probably be Graveborn or Berserker, but that's not the point of this video. Let's get into the spell shot tree. So one of the main reasons we're playing spell shot in the first place and why we're getting so much damage is spell weaving stack and then converting the spell damage that we get from those spell weaving stacks into gun damage and also fire rate through uh, magic bullets and just warming up and some other stuff within the tree. Talking about what 
the other things that we want to spec into are uh, you can get this reload speed depending upon the weapon that you're using. I'm using liquid cooling, so this reload speed is not really going to help me out. But like I mentioned, there's a ton of different weapon options that you can use, so reload speed will probably benefit almost any of those weapons. However, you can end up playing Warcaster. You can max this out so that when you get a kill, you have a chance to instantly reload your weapon. And this is going to increase its chance based on how many spell weaving stacks you have. So if you have a ton of stacks and you max this out, you have a pretty high chance of resetting it, in which case the uh, additional reload speed may not have as much of a benefit if you're you know on kill reloading but we're not going to be using warcaster because i'm using liquid cooling but if you're using any other weapon it's certainly a good pickup you definitely want to get the just warming up for the fire rate for spell weaving stack overall that's just going to increase your damage a ton at some point on certain weapons the extra fire rate can feel kind of bad if you're missing a lot of your shots particularly with like the cryo smgs the night shades and stuff if you feel like you're missing your shots because you're afraid of fire just out of control uh, don't feel too bad knocking these down a few points and then uh, instead opting for more reload speed. Or something that's actually pretty good is getting a good amount of points into Font of Mana to not only reduce your spell cooldown, but also to reduce your action skill cooldown so that we have our From the Shadows up more often and also our Buffmeister up more often. Of course, we're going to be getting blast can Glass Cannon for the extra uh, spell damage here, and we also don't want to recharge our ward anyway because we're using the Cursed Witch Shield to give us 100% extra damage. The other things we don't care about, Spell Crit doesn't help us, and we don't want the ward like I just mentioned. Of course, we want Font of Mana, like I said before. Just put a few points into that. And then we're going to get high thread count here. I probably uh, put one one point too many into this one. Should have put one more point here, but neither here nor there. You definitely want to get high thread count to increase your spell, being, spell weaving stack. So you just get additional gun damage, additional spell damage, whatever. For the rest of these points, it doesn't really matter. You could do imbued weapon, although I'm not even 100% that this even works with uh, buff my shirt's kind of hard to tell either way it's probably fairly insignificant not a whole bunch of extra damage if you're using a gun like the queen's cry a cryo smg any gun that isn't the uh, liquid cooling that's going to auto reload warcaster is certainly what you'd want to pick up here for mobbing and general play i'm going to go imbued weapon because i'm using the liquid cooling and then we're just going to put our one point into one slot one kill to increase our gun damage per stack of spell weaving now, the rest of this is a little bit of preference. Also depends on the weapon that you're using. So I'm going to pretty much be done with the spell weaving tree or spell shot tree, and I'm going to go all the way down into Stab Mancer to get a thousand cuts for some extra damage. Depending on the weapon that you're using, a thousand cuts may not be all that great. Or if you really don't care about killing bosses that fast and you want your mobbing to be a little bit more fun, or if you're using a spell that isn't the buff meister and you want more uptime on it, Sever the Thread is certainly not something bad here. You could definitely get this. I just decide to opt out for it because I want the flat additional damage in the Stabomancer tree. But getting high thread count is certainly, or sorry, Sever the Thread is certainly an alternative. So look out for that if you guys are interested in a kind of different way to set this up. And then you could just, you know, put some points into Warcaster or Font of Mana. In terms of what we want to put into Savomancer, we want the extra movement speed here because we're then going to use Swift Death, which is going to increase our damage based on how fast we're moving. We're going to be getting a whole bunch of extra movement speed, so the extra damage that we benefit from this is actually going to be pretty substantial. Then we're going to put some points into Arsenal just for gun damage and spell damage, which is going to also stack our gun damage. We're going to max out Swift Death here. Previously, I was putting points into Exploit Their Weakness. However, since I'm using a Cryo Buffmeister and a Cryo Gun, that's only one status effect. So this is only going to be 6% extra damage, which I don't think is all that significant. But we do have a lot of extra space here, so I'm just going to max out Arsenal. And then I'm going to put 2 points into Exploit Their Weakness. If you want more boss damage, you could max out Exploit Their Weakness and then also use a different you know, element Buffmeister. Maybe Fire or something, so that you can make this 12%. Then we're going to get Elusive, so that we can sprint while shooting and then we're going to max uh, sneak attack or get sneak attack to four rather mainly this is just 12 percent extra damage because whenever we're in uh, from the shadows we're critting all the time so extra crit damage is really nice there but then we're also getting um a thousand cuts here uh three points in is going to give us a good bit of extra damage this build's kind of weird you're you're probably looking at it like what the hell is this like you have three points in in over here and the other tree isn't even capstoned you saw the gameplay the build is good it's kind of weird but this is ultimately like the highest damage setup at least that you can get for just pr straight up bossing but also i mean you just literally one shot every uh, mob anyway so overall i really like the setup but like i mentioned you could decide to opt out of getting a thousand cuts and instead go for sever the thread however you do lose the sneak attack there if you for some reason really want executioner's blade and eh, never mind never mind you don't want executioner's blade you want one slot one kill because it's so much extra gun damage Getting into the rest of the stuff. So when it comes to weapons, like I said, there's a ton of variation here. The two best weapons, hands down, are the Queen's Cry and the Liquid Cooling. 
The Queen's Cry I think has the highest burst damage in the game, however this variant that I have is low mag size and shoots 3 shots per shot, so you shoot the entire magazine extremely fast, especially if you have extra rate of fire which we get like a ton of right. It shoots the entire magazine extremely quickly so I kind of don't enjoy using it for mobbing. I also don't like that it's projectile based while mobbing and also the comets seem to just kill me all the time. However, if you have a higher magazine variant of this, this is very good for mobbing. Queen's Cry is very good for spell shot particularly because it seems to scale off of spell damage, so that's why the damage for this is really good, but when you use it on other characters, it may not seem as good. Overall, Liquid Cooling is the most consistent, overall very strong weapon, and I'd highly recommend that most people use this, but if you prefer to use Queen's Cry, that's certainly the second best option there. Um, if you're using the Liquid Cooling, I'd recommend having a Masterwork Handbow so that you can quickly swap to it and instantly get those spell weaving stacks because if you're automatically reloading using the liquid cooling you're not going to be getting those spell weaving stacks right so i'd recommend having this also this thing is just a lot of fun to use i showed some gameplay of it at the beginning of the video every crit that you get is going to ricochet and having guaranteed crit with from the shadows makes this thing a whole bunch of fun to use for the other weapons you can just use literally whatever you want I made a video talking about the 10 best weapons in the game. I think there's like 12 in there or something. I'd recommend watching that video if you're curious, but you can just use whatever you want. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be using liquid cooling for this setup. As such, we're going to be using things that are going to pair well with that. As for our spell, like I mentioned, we are using the Buffmeister. I have a Cryo one, which apparently scales off of spell damage. I have some interesting information about Buffmeister that I'm going to make a separate video on, but the TLDR here is that you want it to have Pew on the bottom, so that it increases your fire rate, and also this is overall just going to increase your base damage of your weapon, which is extremely good whenever, when using literally any weapon in the game, in the increased base damage is really good. I happen to have one that is very good, it's volatile and has two spell charges. A friend of mine gave me this, Mako Enthusiast, so thanks to him. He will probably never see this video though, but uh, thanks to him, this Buffmeister is absolutely insane and this is what I would recommend you guys using. You definitely don't have to use Buffmeister though, you can use any other skill. Something that is a particularly very interesting interaction is that if you have a neck where whenever you cast a spell it reduces your remaining action skill cooldown by 20%, if you have a spell such as the uh, triggering saw blades here, anytime, so let's say I use my uh, From the Shadows here, let's put it on cooldown. So because the spell is a repeating cast, and with this neck whenever we cast the spell it reduces our remaining action skull, it counts as casting the spell even when you're just spamming this. So as you can see I just got the cooldown down literally instantly on my From the Shadows. So if you wanted to abuse this, you certainly could. I am not with my build, but there's no harm in it. I don't think it's particularly broken, but as you can see, you could just use this and it's insanely good and you can just get your From the Shadows back. But alternatively, you don't even have to use a bugged one. You could just use something that has a whole bunch of charges, right? If there's a spell that you really like that has like three spell charges, every single use of it is going to reduce the cooldown by 20% flat. So overall, it's really good. And that pairs pretty nicely with my Buffmeister having two charges too. I really like using this neck, but an alternative to this neck is just literally anything else that has just just like frost damage or whatever element that you're using or you could use one with a spell shot power or stab master power to increase the duration of from the shadows and then what you want on the roll is just all damage dealt and action skill cooldown rate depending both of these that i have are pretty nice i like this one if it had action skill cooldown rate, i think that would be better um, and also of course if it had spell shot power this thing would be pretty good like i said my build is not even 100 percent optimized but i like using this because i like just having from the shadows up as often as possible when it comes to our ward, we are of course using the Cursed Wit. This is the, I have the wrong one equipped, sorry about that. Typically I use this one, uh, I just had the wrong enchant. You always want to use Cursed Wit because this is going to literally double your damage whenever your ward is depleted. Uh, this is kind of mandatory to be honest with pretty much any damaging build because 100% extra damage is double the damage. In terms of our rings, these two are very, very good. I'm really happy about these. Uh, mood rings are what you want because you want whenever your ward is not full, it, the effects are increased. So overall, this is going to give 34% gun damage, but also a ton of action skill cooldown rate and a ton of pistol crit damage, which is really going to help with getting our from the shadows cooldown really low. I have two of these. Overall, that's what you want. In terms of the class item here, Two things that you want, you want it to be a smart armor so that your crit chance is reduced but your crit damage is increased so that our From the Shadows basically has 50% extra crit damage because we're critting all the time. Mine, my class item is the single thing that I want to upgrade the most. Mine isn't that bad because it's a smart armor and it has high thread count but I have spell shot power and then I have three into the reload speed. I would way rather the reload speed be just warming up and I, if it's possible, I'd like it to be a stab master power. I don't know if that's possible though with high thread count. I think it's only a spore warden or graveborn i'm not sure but also companion damage gun crit ward regen these things don't help me out at all you could get all damage dealt you could get gun damage you could get movement speed you could get fire rate like if i had any of those things if i had this role 
um, on here, my damage would literally be like 30, 40% higher. It's actually crazy how much higher it could be with the optimal class mod, and this build is still that good, but you really just want the high thread count for the extra spell weaving stacks, and then you want the crit damage here, but I literally tested using a blue class item here without the 50% crit damage, but having the all damage dealt. Um, which one I was using? Yeah, this one, the all damage dealt, and it was still very, very good. So honestly, just make sure that you get high thread count and make sure that it either has the smart armor or it has all damage dealt. Let's talk about enchants, and then I'll show you guys some gameplay. Enchants are probably the largest, the single largest DPS increase that you can get with this build because they just increase your damage by so much. We're going to be using a lot of the action skill active ones because those are just have such high values. Uh, the single best one is to, to get is while action skill is active, increase frost damage or whatever element you're using by 50%. So we're going to have this pretty much all the time with our uh, in the shadows. And then you want on action skill start, increase damage health by 20%. These two are very good. And then on action skill start, increase gun damage by 40%. And then while action skill is active, increase elemental damage. These are the four best ones that you can get. Alternatively, on spell cast, increase all damage dealt by 15% is not that bad. Or you could get um, on spell cast, I don't know if I have one, on spell cast, increase damage type of whatever you're using by 30%. And then if you have a spell with like four charges or whatever, you could keep that up fairly often. But on action skill start, increase status effect, chance of damage is not all that great. Um, that's kind of all the good ones. I'd recommend just getting the ones that I have on. I mean, 50%, 20%, 40%, 35%. That's a lot of percent, guys. So I'd highly recommend trying to get all that. All right, now I'm just going to do a uh, normal chaos chamber just to show you guys how the build functions in real time. Why am I running over here? Uh, as you can see, I have the hambo in my other slot pretty much literally just to reload and get the uh, spell weaving stacks up. I forget about it all the time while using my liquid cooling. Of course, if you're using your spell, you are gonna give yourself spell shot or spell weaving stacks, but it's not all that high up time when you're using something like the Buffmeister, but regardless, this is still a fairly good option. It's just, if you have dementia like me, you may forget about it sometimes, but um, there, there we go lagging. But as you, can, <laughs> as you can see right off the bat, Image is just a little stupid, obviously not using glitches or anything. I haven't even mentioned in this video, if you wanted to take advantage of double um, Buffmeister, you very easily could and just not use From the Shadow. Not double Buffmeister, sorry. Uh, Buffmeister with another high damaging spell. I imagine they're going to patch that at some point, and obviously I didn't want to cover that, but um, with this build being as optimized as it is now, I imagine that would be like absolutely insane to see how much damage you could do abusing the Buffmeister glitch. Dude, this guy is being really annoying. But like all my videos, I kind of just wanted to show you guys um, the gameplay unedited, just so you can see how it actually functions without you know any any fun, funny business going on. You can see that you can literally just hew into a chaos dungeon and walk around and just one-shot stuff. Again, of course, I'm going to complain about the mob density and it being a little boring, because you guys have to sit here and witness me run around the map waiting for enemies to spawn. Oh, woohoo, dude, we did it. That was really hard. That was really crazy. All right next one by the way if you're still watching please feel free to subscribe something like 80 percent of people aren't subscribed so having having a few more subs would be nice i'd like to get to 150k at some point in my lifetime but you know that's okay as long as you enjoy the content i guess that's all that matters but you know seeing seeing the numbers go up is a nice little dopamine boost i'll probably show you guys this floor and then i'll just start editing whenever there's actually um, stuff going on this is again mainly to just represent that you can walk in and without anything going on you can just kill stuff but again the uh, spawn rate and where did this guy where did that guy come from dude spawn rate enemies is pretty weird we do have our um from the shadows up very very often right now with the amount of skill cooldown that i got which i actually really like i was on a floor with more enemies i could actually kind of see how often it was up but it seems like it's up like look it was I, it just went on cooldown and it and it came back after a buffmeister use it came back in like eight seconds okay <laughs> my buffmeister just killed me very cool i made this floor elite so hopefully it's more entertaining oh look i forgot i forgot about spell weaving stacks already i'll do some spell weaving stacks while shooting this guy i guess oh i just killed the guy all right let's swap weapons and let's mess up this dragon lord statue Get owned, man. Get absolutely clapped on. As you can see, I made the floor elite just to show you guys that we still own and pwn. Got a little quartz action over here. See you later. Don't even need from the shadows. Encounter clear in record time. All right, these these floors I'm fan I'm a fan of because of just constant uh, enemy spawning. Big fan of these. 
if, if I had the opportunity, I would make every single floor this floor. I don't care. I would just do this over and over and over again. Enemies seem to be getting, uh, seem to be getting resist damage a good bit. I don't know what that's about. Oh no, maybe I, maybe I take it back, dude. Maybe I take it back. We don't like the spawnling shrooms, man. We're not, we're not a fan of that. I don't have from the shadows up, so that guy doesn't die super quickly. We killed everything so fast that I didn't get my stuff back. How many barrels was in this room, dude? I realize I haven't really been talking. Nothing, nothing too interesting has happened. I've kind of gotten unlucky with the floors that I've gotten. That is an exploder boy. Kind of just running around, you know, you know the deal. We got a little quartz action. Goodbye, sir. I believe we have the boss pretty soon here. That'll be nice, I guess. I really want a floor of just only, only badass enemies. Can I get that? Did I just like ricochet or something? I think I shot that guy's shield and I died. I don't know. All right, we're finally on the boss floor. Let's see if I get cursed with Dragon Lord again, which seems to always happen. Ooh, we got Parasite. Easy, easy clap, dude. Parasite doesn't know what's coming. Parasite has no idea what's about to hit him, dude. Guy's clueless. Look at him. Look at this silly little mushroom man. I have my from the shadows. Oh my god. Oh my god. I almost died because I didn't have it up by Parasite. Alright, well that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe for videos similar to this one. Feel free to let me know down in the comments if there's any other builds that you guys would like to see from me. And yeah, I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Peace.